Hi, good evening. You know, have you ever uh, um, just enjoy seeing these young people, especially the little ones, and they have dreams. Their imagination just goes all over the place. In fact, as I'm with uh, my grandchildren and read these books, they get so into it and they can envision for a moment what it would be like to be that hero, for example, or to be that little girl or that stuffed animal that, that talked and came alive. But what happens as they grow or we grow? Often our imagination, our ability to dream, it just fades away. And we become so a part of what is status quo, what's acceptable. And tonight I wanna focus on leaving the ordinary behind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that you're a God that has declared that with you all things are possible. So as we jump into your promises tonight, Lord God, give us the eyes to see the possibilities, to be able to look and see our life and the purpose that you have for us uh, as you reveal it to us. And with the eyes of faith to allow the impossible seem very real and possible. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. So leaving behind the ordinary, Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says it this way. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight to the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus Christ. You know, I think we've all had those moments, haven't we? You know, we have been broken, hurt. It's so easy to give up. And yet I look at the tenacity of a young person, particularly a, a toddler, or how about even younger than that, a, a small infant that is learning uh, how to crawl and just is developing those muscles and pretty soon is rocking back and forth and, and then is able to make movement, particularly when there's motivation. Tonight I think that we need to develop our faith muscles so that we are motivated and that we can push with the, the power of vision and with the eyes of faith to press in to what God has created us to do in this life. You know, with COVID and all the challenges that go with it, you know, one of the things that it has given me is, is a chance to think outside the box. So much so, the points I'm going to share with you tonight, I hope it will stir and awaken uh, just a fresh perspective of uh, thinking out of the box of what God has for you right now in this season. Not when this is over, not when things are back to normal, but to embrace the, the plan in the midst of this time and season that he has brought you to, to fulfill what it is that he has for you. Think of the scripture in Ephesians 3.20, the Passion Translation says it this way, Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you, to accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power is constantly energizing you. Leaving ordinary behind. You know, as I read the Old Testament and I am fascinated by these stories and with these fresh eyes, I am challenged uh, and made aware that God uses ordinary people and to do extraordinary things. And he challenges them to leave the ordinary behind and press on to embrace what he is just prompting them and encouraging them to pursue. Each of us, we have a plan. We have a purpose. 
and then the highways and byways of life. Very unique path that we each take. We can be encouraged by our fellow believers, but the path is so unique that we must rely upon that internal GPS of the Holy Spirit to allow the promptings to direct us right in line with his divine purpose. But in order to stir and awaken that prompting, we have to start dreaming. We need to allow our imagination that is fueled by faith, that is fine-tuned and, and then like a prescription, is able to hone in on the path and the purpose that he has for us. And as he gives us that clear vision, we're able to observe the obstacles and the challenges along the way, but not be detoured by them. So think about this phrase, greatness, it's not being better than someone else. It's being the best version of you. You are so special that his word declares that you are a treasure. And he has not only created you, but he has imparted in you unique abilities and purposes. And as you surrender your life to Christ and then continue to surrender, right? Not my will, but your will be done. You're able to uh, allow that glory because you're made in his image, to begin to stir and give you that uh, and awaken that unique DNA that's yours. I love these fairy tale stories. Of course, I've read a few, especially with these granddaughters, right? All wanting to be princesses. But one thing I love are the stories of a father's love and how uh, he has provided so much for them. And my favorite is the story of a princess that's unlike any of the other princesses and was made fun because she was so unique. Because she could ride a skateboard and, and she could, you know, with her kung fu, uh, was able to, you know, get that dragon out of the ballroom. But in that, she was true to herself. And I think as we uh, just jump into leaving the ordinary behind. We need to be true to who we are in him. That workmanship, that amazing masterpiece of a treasure that you and I are. So how do we get to that place to uh, awaken and stir and be true to ourself? Well, if life was a game, it would require you to get off the sidelines, come on now, and, and get right into the center. You know, to as they say, it would require you to grab the ball, run with it, so that you can have some skin in the game. And it means getting rid of your wishful thinking, right? But to put feet to your dreams and uh, to be able to then get involved in the adventure of life. Sidelines are easy to do, right? There's no complications. You're just kind of, eh, you know, another day, another, you know, activity, but there's no stretching. There's nothing that is demanded of you. But when you're in the game, you know, hey, some of you that are watching might've been like me in sports. You're in the game. I remember when I was playing field hockey, I'd be tripped. I'd have, you know, the ball, you know, going my way. I'd be hit by it. I've had black eyes, everything else. But did that mean I was gonna quit in that game? Oh no. It was being purposeful and driven and determined to, to stay and do my part. So as we leave the ordinary behind, what is your part? to play in this life, in this world. You may choose as the Lord of your life. He has plans. He wants to do far over and above all you could ever hope and imagine. So what are you hoping, hoping and imagining you will do? So point number one, life will give you what you desire. Now we know as we think, so are we. So how do we stir and, 
and awaken the very dreams and, and desires that he has. Well, we know from Psalms, he says, as we delight in him, he will give us the desires of his heart. And he imparts his desires. He begins as you're seeking and longing to know. He begins to reveal what those very uh, purposes and plans are that he has for us. Psalms mentions that he instructs us in the way that we should go. And I remember years ago when I had finished high school and I was trying to figure out what to do, a prophet called me out in a room and he said, you're having challenges trying to figure out what to do with your life. And he gave me promises in God's word and asked me to meditate on it. And he said, what was a weakness for you will become a strength that you will share with others. And that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm sharing an opportunity for you to embrace the adventure of life, to leave the ordinary behind. And, and like Philippians 3 mentions that uh, one compelling focus, right? I forget the past and I fasten my heart to the future instead. Why? It's your future. Embrace it. So as we think about that future plan that God has, what is the desire? Think of this scripture in Proverbs 13, 12. It says, hope deferred will make the heart sick, but when the desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. When you begin to awaken and allow your, your ear to hear those desires that God is, is placing in your heart to fulfill, there is a tree of life. There's a, there's a purpose there's a, a zeal, and in that, it's, a, you know, it's igniting, not only uh, just a drive in you, but it provides a curiosity in others. I think that's what it means to be salt and light, to have a purpose and, and to be able to embrace it. Why? Because our heart is not deferred, right? Because our hope is being fueled by faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things not seen so don't keep put uh, putting off your dreams and placing your goals on a back burner find your place in the unfolding of God's plan for you number two gratitude now, it sounds like attitude, but it's with a little grit with it. Proverbs 21, 5 encourages us with these words. The thoughts of the steadily diligent, they tend only to plenteousness. But everyone who is impatient and hasty hastens only to want. You know, all the things in life, I remember when... God began to reveal to me that I was to marry and have children, along with uh, a call of God on my life and, and many other things. This scripture was my foundation during that season. And God stirred in my heart. He said, Cindy, all that I'm stirring and awakening and imparting and revealing in you, you're going to have gratitude. You're going to need gratitude to not give up, to stay the course and just keep moving on. And like you and me, I remember when I fell right outside my front door. I had just come home from church. I was getting mail in the mailbox and slipped on black ice. And I looked down at my ankle and it was just all over the place, bones sticking out. It was, I couldn't walk. And as I uh, went into shock and couldn't move, what could move was my faith. God's word began to arise out of my heart, and I began to declare the name of Jesus. That was movement. That was all I could do. But every time I spoke that name, it was just like the fog just cleared enough for me to say more and declare more. And pretty soon my thoughts became clear enough where I could get a phone and, and ask for help. And ultimately, an ambulance was able to take me on into a hospital. But you know, in life, we need the gratitude. Maybe the only thing we can do at that moment, we have fallen and we are in a bad place, is just call on his name. 
And what happens? He says, call on me and I will answer. Isn't it awesome to know that we have a God that's on our side? And even when we fall or even when we get hurt, if we call on his name, he will pick us up. You know, I was praying for you tonight and praying over this, this topic. And God showed me a legion of angels. And he said, Cindy, the people you're speaking to tonight, they're all over the world. And I'm sending out my angels to, to release and bring about the, the word that is going forth out of your heart. To give them the eyes to see. To give them an understanding of the glory, of the power. And I'm sharpening that word so it will just stir like a seed and awaken. And I will give increase. And I will bring about a new season and a new day. Gratitude. It gives you the ability that you're not only strong as your faith, courage, convictions, uh, and determination will help you make that next move, but it takes you to the next step in spite of the bumps and the falls and the turns, the collisions. And while others see obstacles, it gives us the ability that gratitude does to, by faith to see the opportunities that are appearing in that new day. What does his word declare? That it is a new day and mercies. What's this? His loving kindness, all of that are there to greet us at the start of a new day. I even love that promise that joy comes in the morning. Joy, that is our strength. We need the gratitude. Often as you look at faith in the Bible, it talks about patient endurance. We need to stay the course and not give up. And that's what happened to Abraham. It said that he did not allow uh, his surroundings to define uh, and to negate God's promise. He stood firm in faith. And that faith allowed him to press on to embrace his inheritance and ultimately us too, right? Because it says that Christ, he was on that cross and it says, cursed is he that hangs on a tree that we might receive the blessings of Abraham. Point number three, there is better than here. You know, in the parable of the talents in Luke, the message says it in verse 26 in a unique way. It says, risk your life and get more than you've ever dreamed. Play it safe and end up holding the bag. You know, the just shall live by faith. And as I think about, you know, just looking at those in the Bible, particularly even in the New Testament and in the book of Acts. They had to, by faith, press on, move on, and know there is better than right here. What did Jesus often say? I love how he would declare, take up your mat and walk. He uh, declared action. And faith is action. It's corresponding action of obedience. And there is more than here because it takes a risk to trust that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. When Pat was in the military the first time as a Marine, I wasn't as cooperative as I should have been. I wanted to do ministry and I just didn't see, my eyes could not see the potential of where I was. And so all I did was complain. All I was was frustrated, waiting for that moment to be used by God. But in my mind, I didn't see that the possibilities were right before me, but I wasn't allowing my faith through the risk of stepping out and doing something outside the box of what I was comfortable with. And then when Pat got out, I was so excited. I was thrilled thinking, oh, now we can have a normal life. But as God would have it, he wasn't done with what he had for my husband, but especially for me, because I had not learned that lesson the first time. So he gave me a vision in the middle of the night, told me my husband, oh no, he's not going to be a Marine this time. He's going to be in the Air Force. 
And I thought that is just not possible. But I knew that dream was real. And I began to take the risk to trust God and to pray about my heart. You see, the next season didn't change. There were still the moves. There was still him gone. There were so many of the same challenges. But you know what the difference was? It was me. The difference was me. Because I began through the eyes of faith to be able to make it better than just here. I risked and said, okay, I'm leaving ordinary behind. Come on, show me your out-of-box perspective. And he did. Because pretty soon I knew before Pat or even the government knew when we were going to have orders. God began to unveil what plan and what, what divine purpose he had in this next season. I knew how many, uh, you know, if it was a two years or a few months, I knew exactly what it was. And in that time and season, the extraordinary, the unbelievable opportunities open. As God's word declares, he'll open up doors no man can shut. And it was exciting in that roller coaster of adventure. Was it perfect? No, far from it. We had our share of challenges. But the gratitude, I pressed and stayed the course. And I knew that God had called me to this time and place. So your vision will take you on your unique path. And it may not make sense. I don't know of any other uh, officer wives that thought of the military as a mission field, but I did. And uh, in that place, this unique path that God began to reveal to me, it led me beyond the status quo and the conventions of the culture. I was not a typical traditional officer's wife. I won a traditional anything. And in that fun season of life, I just never knew what God would do next. He defined the realities of my life. And that uh, uh, experience gave me a broad scope, not just of the community of my nation, but because of the experiences that were before us. I began to see the world at large. Vision is the ultimate adventure that will help you to discover the person you were always meant to be. He will give you that eyes, that clarity, because for a lack of vision, we perish. He wants us to be motivated. And like point number four, to exercise uncompromising faith. Hebrews 6.12 says, So don't allow your hearts to grow dull or lose your enthusiasm, but follow the example of those who fully received what God has promised because of their strong faith and patient endurance. Like Abraham, he did not give up. God gave him a choice, though. He had to lead the comfortable. And how about this? Provision, resources... He had a choice though, and God has given you a choice tonight. Will you choose to leave the ordinary behind and embrace the extraordinary life that's yours? Tonight, I just wanna stir and shake things up. He's doing it for me uh, every day. That's why I'm teaching this series because I know there's more he wants me to do and I need a little kick to be able to embrace that unknown terrain that is before me but I need to exercise faith. It takes faith to navigate the journey from the known to the unknown. As we walk by faith and not by sight. And why is faith so important? Because as we journey through life, we're gonna be bombarded by storms, just like the one we have tonight. And faith will empower us to overcome them all because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony you see the words of faith that is released Abraham made a declaration even when God told him to sacrifice his his son right but he made a declaration he told the servants we'll be back he knew God's 
promise was through the legacy of that son of his. And his faith was being exercised. It was uncompromising. And as believers, we can't compromise because we have an enemy. He is looking to see if we will trip up and, and compromise and, and to not lay hold and be steadfast to reap that full reward. Number five reminds us this. Learn to see with new eyes. Learn to see with new eyes. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. As we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal God's plan. He's just wanting us to ask and receive, and he will give us the eyes, the new eyes to see what he has. Faith does that. It gives us a perception. Faith, it helps us to see what, with, the, with that new perspective, but it also allows us to be able to embrace that invisible process because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We're able to see with, with a, a reality that is not limited to the natural world. Reminds me of Elisha's servant, right? They wake up, they see the, uh, the army before them, they're outnumbered. And Elisha the prophet is just calm and cool. But the servant is like, you know, freaking out by this scene. And Elisha asked for God to open up his eyes. And when the servant's eyes opened, he saw that there were um, just innumerable chariots and angels that far outnumber the enemy. You see, when you allow God to give you the new eyes, because faith does that, believing does that, when you are unwavering, it does that, gratitude does that, when you allow him to give you the new eyes, you're able to see the obstacles knowing that you can speak to that mountain and it will be removed. Why? Because nothing is impossible to those who believe, because we have a God who is on our side, who can be against us. And my final point is this, be willing to go where you have never been. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Ecclesiastes 7, 8. There's a season for everything. I was thinking about that as I was getting to my car. It was so just stuffy and humid in that parking lot. And then God reminded me, well, very soon it's gonna get cold and chilly. The seasons of life, they're there. There's a purpose and there's a time for everything. And so it takes faith, it takes courage, uh, it takes grit, right, to, to break the cultural molds, uh, the social and, and even the political limitations and the family expectations because God has a plan just for you, unique, one of a kind. He wants you and it started when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, but that's only the beginning. You're a new creation now. And he wants you to be able to hear and have him reveal the path, the plans that he has for you. They give you a hope and a future. Well, I'm excited about this series, and hey, you know, I totally forgot. Mashari's been hosting, we've got Tammy, we've got Ann, and the fun is only just beginning. Why? Because I'm getting ready to close, and then we're doing a Zoom, let's chat about it, conversation in 15 minutes. If you don't have that information, go to our social media outlets. It's on our Facebook page. It's also on Instagram, and we would love to have you join us for some conversation and dialogue. But in the meantime, put and leave.
that ordinary behind. You're in the game. You're not on the sidelines. And with God on your side, you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'll look forward for many of you uh, to have you join us on the Zoom conference call. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.